scientists discover a mysterious metallic sphere hurtling into our atmosphere. It is made principally of titanium, which is incredible. A close inspection seems to reveal something alive inside. If what we're saying is correct, then this changes everything. July 31st, 2013. A team of astrobiologists from the University of Sheffield searches for signs of alien life infiltrating our atmosphere. They use weather balloons equipped with GPS technology to gather evidence. The use of weather balloons is a simple but effective way of seeing what's up there in the stratosphere. We have a CD drawer which can open and close at any altitude we choose. When it's open, it contains these little round stubs and the material falls onto the stubs. Very straightforward, very simple. The research rig flies 16 miles up to reach the stratosphere. At this altitude, temperatures reach minus 68 Fahrenheit and 100 mile an hour winds are common. We're talking about essentially fishing trips. We send up balloons and we catch what we catch. After 17 minutes of sampling at 84,000 feet, the CD drawer closes and the payload parachutes back to Earth. The team follows strict protocols to prevent contamination while taking the samples back to the lab for analysis. So we put the stubs into this very high-powered scanning electron microscope that looks at the surface of the stub. The samples sit on small circles of sterile carbon. On one of them, the team spots a strange sphere about the width of a human hair. Now this is a, a photograph, an image of what we see down the electron microscope. You can see it's a spherical ball. I don't know why it's spherical, except that spheres are very stable objects. Some observers claim the sample is no mystery. It is similar in size to grass seeds or grains of pollen. Both occur naturally at high altitudes. There have been records even of spiders being found in the stratosphere and microbes. If hurricanes and other weather phenomena can bring up spiders into the atmosphere, then yes, I would expect that grass seeds and pollen can get there as well. The Sheffield team bombards the strange sphere with x-rays to get clues to its chemical composition. We did EDEX analysis, x-ray analysis. We find that it is made principally of titanium with a little bit of vanadium, which is incredible. Titanium is a rare metal normally found deep in the Earth's crust, not over 15 miles above the Earth's surface. Microscopic investigation of the sample reveals another startling discovery. A dent in the hard carbon surface of the sample collection stub resembles a tiny impact site. So we've got this amazing impact crater. Now that is kind of equivalent to the impact crater that an asteroid would cause if it hit the Earth. So we think this is a mini asteroid, as it were. But critics point out that finding titanium entering Earth's atmosphere is possible. It could simply be a fragment of space junk. One has to remember that there are particles of titanium in Earth orbit that re-enter all the time. These are particles that are put there by exploding spacecraft in low Earth orbit. It's not surprising that they eventually get captured by the Earth's atmosphere and come down. When the team attempts to move the sphere, they make a disturbing discovery that makes the space junk hypothesis seem unlikely. When we move the ball across, material streams from the ball. When we do an analysis on that, we find it's made of carbon and oxygen with a bit of nitrogen. There is something oozing from the metal sphere. And tests reveal the strange material contains organic matter. So it's living biological material, we believe. So this material has been inside the sphere, and now, because we're moving it across, it's oozing out. The discovery of organic matter inside the sphere opens the door to an amazing hypothesis. When I say this sphere, one possibility that comes to mind is that maybe it's a delivery system for panspermia. The idea of panspermia is life everywhere that microorganisms could be widely distributed throughout the cosmos 
and could be traveling from one body to another. Seeds can travel through space. Spores can travel through space. Life is not blocked by space. Not everyone accepts the claim that the sphere is transporting life from an alien world. It seems a leap to suggest that it comes uh, from outer space rather than from Earth. Exceptional claims require exceptional evidence. It is unlikely that such a tiny piece of metal could have traveled across space on its own. But the Sheffield team believes it may have been part of something bigger. So what we're thinking is possibly this material comes from comets. So it's coming in in large pieces of ice. Life could be trapped in the ice and sent out from other parts of the solar system that could then travel to Earth, go through the atmosphere, and land in our oceans and take up residence. If the metal sphere is indeed traveling between planets, seeding biological material, the implications are staggering. If what we're saying is correct, then this changes everything. It changes biology. Biology is no longer an Earth-centered subject. It's connected to the cosmos. We're talking about life everywhere. Still to come, an astronaut on a spacewalk discovers damage to his suit. I actually do have a little bit of a hole. Astronaut lives are at stake. NASA has to investigate. 200 miles above the surface of the Earth, an astronaut discovers a breach in his spacesuit. There seems to be some kind of a cut on his glove. You get a hole in your suit. That could kill you very quickly. NASA launches an investigation to find out what caused the potentially deadly damage. They noticed several uh, cuts in the fingertips on both of my gloves, as if someone had taken a razor blade and cut the rubber material. Uh, Rick Mastracchio's helmet camera, good view as uh, Clay Anderson emerges to begin the second spacewalk of his career. August 15th, 2007. ISS astronauts Rick Mastracchio and Clay Anderson are almost five hours into a spacewalk. Their mission is to reposition one of the station's communications antennae. An astronaut outside doing EVA is able to improvise or fix things that might be more difficult to do robotically.